بچه ها با یور سوید سپر سافت رومانتیک پرنچی پسا سیل کیتا Some people need the dozen roses And that's the only way you prove your love him Listen baby because a moment ago this was so red just a moment ago and i thought i was gonna film it after i done my eat my food and when i was done with my food look it's not red anymore can you see i filmed that this morning and this year well a tiny bit can you see it's initiation of a of a bubble and here look the bubble opened there so it's gonna heal Wow, miraculous how red that was. To open it, look how hurt my hand. Do you think I'm exaggerating when I tell you I go through great efforts and great legs? It just happened. It's not anymore. I'm so glad. I thought it would be much longer, much more painful, but no, it's not. Yay! I am your Princess Silka. The other one. La 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 la. I'm not done with pariente. Not done? Why not? Alright. So he flipped a trip to Europe. That was like the last call, right? Patales de ahogado. Meaning the drowning, throwing something on the table. Meanwhile, he was visiting his mother in Paris. I went to Hamburg and straight to Hamburg and then I went to Paris when he sighted me there just so for him to leave me alone in Paris like the entire day what the heck I don't remember that he went to one French restaurant maybe we did but I don't remember I remember some melodrama at the side of La Seine the river he had a car. Did he rent it one? I remember there was a scene. I might be very silent and quiet about it, but he made a scene. You want me to tell the story again? Okay, so I sort of kind of, I'm not exactly sure what we agreed upon, but I was kind of walking and walking and then eventually I called him at his mother's, where I was of course not invited. Talk about the farce. Because he had been separated from his wife ever since. It would have been nice to just walk in there with him. He could have presented me like anybody, but no. So he spends how much many dollars to get me over to Paris and then he doesn't watch me. He doesn't is with me. What the heck? I called him, he said something about maybe later, or I don't really know exactly what he said, but it was it was sad, it was depressing. No, this is very interesting because I had been a few times in Paris by myself and I never felt depressed because I know. Again, I take the night train in Hamburg at 11 p.m. over to Paris. It arrives at 7 a.m. at Paris time at La Gare du Nord. I know I have to wait the entire day to go to La Gare du Austerlitz to take my train over to Spain. I know I have an entire day by myself. No big deal. So I walk. Now with him, I don't know, I walked and then I went to this dumb park, Park Luxembourg. What park? Man, yeah, French parks are really not that parky. <laughs> Honestly, I have no clue. It's like old, right? Did they cut the shrub brushes, bushes, some kind of statue like, like dumb animal shapes? I don't remember. It was not cool. And then I get it, an episode, man. So I sit down. Felt horrible waiting for it to stop. An hour that thing lasted. And then some dude approaches me. Some man in his 30s, 40s, I don't know. He starts talking to me, but I had an episode. I was laying, I was hospital ready. 
He said, da 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 What does he want from me? I, don't, I, I couldn't hear what he was saying. He wasn't, oh, okay, so he wasn't really speaking that loud because of the proposal he just came up with at the very end of his soliloquy. Among all the words, suddenly I hear the, I hear the phrase, menage à trois. Like, what? Inside. Oh my God, I don't know how I aufgerappelt. I kind of, I got my act together and I kind of, I think I went up and walked out. Barely. I mean, the guy disappeared immediately, right? And then that thing stopped. When did I saw him? I don't know. Was it the same day at nighttime? And then he walks me over to this dumb girl who lives alone in this old farts apartment, feeling lonely like lonely could get for how long? Two years? Three years? How long has she been doing this to herself? Talk about whoring. He never said, but why would he want to visit a girl when he's got me there? Well, probably he already had her. <laughs> he endorsed that thing. I think that's what he said proudly. What an asshole. So then he says, okay, where would you like to go? Let's go someplace. Yeah, over the weekend. Okay. And I did not answer it because I don't. I was the spectator of his lamentable, yeah. That was not really a soliloquy, I have to say. Because I was listening to him. So then he proposes, let's do Berlin. Look, you should have done Firenze, Florence or something else, but not Berlin. Well, that's what he wanted to do. Now I can tell you I should not have done that. So we went to Berlin in May. It was freezing freaking cold. Clouded, cold and, you know. So that's what we did. And uh, Berlin was in construction. I had made the aim to bring capitalism to the entire Berlin and take all the old historic buildings out and put new malls in it. So we did that. So first and foremost, we arrived to what room? Hotel? Uh-uh. Bed and breakfast? No. Some old lady had rented an empty room, which she stuffed with all the beds she probably could. It was a children's room. It had a crib in it too. And then we had to find, you know, shelter and lodge. Eat in the different kind of old bed. It was so uninviting. It was like a storage room. In front of some, was it the Academy of Beaux-Arts, of some, of some art academy, or was it, what was it again? What the heck, Robert? I mean, seriously? And you have a travel agency and that's what you pull out here? Oh, I don't mind. If he doesn't want to be near me, that's just fine. But hey, can I please sleep comfortably? Hello? Anybody in there? So denigrating, man. No, of course the old lady was in that apartment. It's not cool. I never had any acquaintance in my life who lived so slobby like she did. Yeah, he for saving a few bucks. We went to a concert, classical music, what a great idea, but Germany men, they are not romantic. They have no fine feelings about anything. The hall was large, the light was on the entire concert. It wasn't full. It was so freezing cold inside, emotionally wise. And then we went out. It was so freezing freaking cold outdoors. He also went to see an art exhibition because he liked so much the same art as I do. And we saw the master and he put out some negativity. I was freezing inside. It's like he put the fridge on in the field. It was horrible. I was suffering. I could barely breathe. And then we walked over, I remember some, what was that building? Was that now a library? And again, some drama he pulled out. I did not say the word. I just stared at him, what is this? Oh, by the way, he ended the flight to Berlin. Oh my God, he was so wonderful, he was so generous. Oh my goodness. He offered me a bottle of champagne. Yeah, a tiny one. An individual bottle, which I'm so sorry. I said the other day, two ounces, not that's too small, right? Um, what was it again? I have no clue. How many ounces might that be? Six? I don't know. I'm not worse than the subject. Yeah, one glass. So the stewardess brings out the champagne and then he starts complaining. Five bucks for a champagne? How romantic, Robert. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you see what I'm saying? If you don't want to buy it, then don't. I didn't ask him to. 
I mean, wherever he could, he would part, hurt me. He would part my heart in pieces. And then for Kabbalah, the, you know, the Choresh. I mean, for fucking it off completely. Yeah, now the world is unmeriting. Is that we went to have some food? I mean, it was like dessert. You know, you don't know Germany. How was that at nighttime? It's deserted. It's empty. The streets are cold. It's not nice. It's nothing inviting. It's like, oh my God, what a contrast to any Mediterranean place. France, Italy, Spain, totally different. So there, there was a little pub. So we go walk in, which was a pub restaurant, meaning a restaurant which was informal, where you people could equally have drinks or equally have some food. So we get some very simple German food. I guess it was simple German food. Close to El Potsdamer Platz, which used to be very famous once, which doesn't exist anymore. So we order the food and we eat, and then the waitress comes, and I see how he stares at the waitress, and the waitress stares, stares back that something was going on. She's very tall, she's like in her 40s, with green eyes. No, she looked interesting as a woman. Not really, I don't mind to, ex to say it. She looked like a, a full-grown-ass woman who probably had some university studies and because of the war and the fall and now she's working as a waitress, big deal, or maybe not, but she looked interesting and, uh, yeah, in a way, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say a beauty queen, but, you know, for what Robert can afford. So she handed over the bill, the check, and he grabs the check. No, he doesn't. He grabs her hand in front of my eyes. I was sitting right next to him. Not even hiding. So what the heck, Robert? I mean, how often did I broken pieces? I must have had like some kind of shell around me not to... I don't know. No, I don't do anything. What would I do? I don't yell at him. Why would I yell at him? He's nothing to me. And if he, if he would have been anybody to me, then at that moment, of course, he has nothing to me. See without my eyes.